Howdy Tubes, welcome back to the Zach Lab. So this is going to be uh, the electrical part two and then some rough end on the uh, plumbing. The plumbing is going to be pretty simple in this coach. Um, I, I, I left off in the last video, last video I just sort of rambled on about what, what was going to happen, what's going on. And, uh, and I've skipped forward, this is about a week later, and I've got all of the wiring done that's sort of like house related, if you would, sort of house style wiring. As far as I've got all the plugs in, I've got the Romex pulled, the breaker box wired up. Uh, I wasn't going to really show that in, in, in this video because it's not really RV related, so to speak, and it's pretty boring. Well, you can buy this in all different kinds of numbers of pairs, numbers of wires. This is a 6.3 portable power cable. This is like what you would see running across a parking lot at a uh, carnival or something like that. Anyway, you get this in all different pairs. So this here is a 10 pair, number 14, meaning it's got, it's got 10 sets of colors of the total of 20 wires, like two oranges, two greens, two reds, and then one red, one green, one orange will have a stripe. I'll show you the different zone. Uh, this is a, a seven, one of these is seven and one is 10 pair. I forgot which is what. This is a 10, six. Anyway, There's a junction box right there. You can see that's the breaker box and that's the junction box. From that junction box, I'm going to run, I'm going to run this OSSW cable to every direction. So I'll have a, a, that uh, 10 6 will go to the, to the truck and that'll be uh, carry the 12 and 24 volts from the charger that goes to uh, charge the, the, truck, the truck batteries that's going to be back here. It'll also carry the circuit for the trailer, electric trailer brakes, and it'll carry a two conductor uh, 120 volt wire up there under the hood to where I can plug the block heater in on the truck. And it all comes back to this breaker box. I'll have the, uh, the, the 10 pair, the 20 wire, will come out of there, go under and back to the generator, and that will carry, it'll be a, a junction box back on the generator. They'll carry all the control circuitry for the generator and the control circuitry for the level meter systems on the three water tanks. And probably a few other things. I won't need all those wires. There'll be a few extras in case I come up with something else I need. Then I'll have a, uh, from the junction box to the, to the underside of the cab, the low voltage stuff, I'll have that 14 wire, the seven pair, and that will carry the, the uh, signal for all the different lights and it'll carry the, uh, any other kind of switches I want to run, like a start stop on the generator, uh, some of the, uh, the airbag control system. I'm going to do a little bit different than a typical truck. I'll explain that later on, but the, uh, I have a couple switches wired for that. Whatever, what is, whatever else you need to control back here from in the cab will go through that cable. Uh, the 10, uh, excuse me, the uh, 6.3 is going to go from a breaker box that's mounted on the generator up under the floor and it's actually what's going to carry the actual power from the generator to the 250 amp plugs that will be in this box. And, uh, and then it's not here yet, it's supposed to be here tomorrow, but I've got a the typical seven-way RV trailer wire, uh, same kind of deal. It's going to go from this box down to the back that will actually be the plug. My actual control panel is going to run everything. It's going to go behind a, what looks like a cabinet door but it's just sort of going to be a, a flat face cabinet or whatever. You open it up and have all the gauges, switches and everything, and it'll have a big, uh, probably larger than 20 wire uh, cable that's going to go down under back up and back up into this box. Anyway, you can trim all the wires back in those boxes to where you've got an extra foot of wire or whatever and just lay them out in there. And it makes it really, really nice and really easy to cut all those wires perfectly and lay them in there where they all hook up just exactly where you want them. So all I've got done so far, and you can see I've got this, uh, there's some plugs wired in. This will be just a, just a typical plug circuit. Comes up around, picks up this plug and that plug, the ones in the back, come back to the breaker box. Uh, there'll be a separate 30 amp circuit. Uh, I think I mentioned it's gonna go to this plug and one over here. It's gonna be sorted for cooking. Uh, AC wired in, I think I kinda already did that on the last video. I've 
got the lighting circuits are, are in, uh, switches, and then I just bring them out to the plugs up here. And uh, I'm just going to get can lighting to mount up the snaps in. I've seen some clothes that are sort of like an afterthought. And I'm just going to wire the little two prong, uh, like I call them a Christmas light extension cord. You know, basically just like you know, this on the end of the uh, actual line. So you just plug it in. So it, it all of those plug ins will be a, uh, there's one right there, and one right back there will be a, uh, an overhead light. these two plugs now this is a main power cord and this is what I was explaining normally this will be rolled up inside there and you'll simply plug the plug into one of these the other one will be primarily used for the instant hot water heater but it could be used also to plug in another camper a welder machine or uh, also I was planning on if I build me a little off-grid shop up there in Colorado somewhere that's where this shop will plug into
right, so I got the rough end pretty well done. We're waiting on, basically waiting on a spray foam now. Uh, the post office lost uh, 16 packages of mine somehow last week. Uh, it was mostly low voltage stuff like the hill lights, uh, the running light, the marker lights along the top, and a bunch of crap that's going in this junction box, I'll explain in a minute. Anyway, it's not here, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it, tell the spray foam guy to come on. He said he thought he could be here like, I think he said Wednesday or Thursday, is a couple weeks ago. But I'm gonna walk you through the electrical system. Okay, if you remember, uh, we installed the breaker box back there on the generator. It's got two 60 amp breakers that feed through a 22 SOW port 63 that comes up with two plugs that run through the floor here. They're mounted to accessible from the outside. Our shore power cord will simply plug in to one of those plugs. You basically plug it into the generator. The shore power cord is this cord right here that comes up to the floor into this breaker box. Now, we've got a breaker box right there. You've got a breaker box right there off camera. Between these two breaker boxes is another piece of OSSW cord, SOOW cord, I always say that backwards. And there's a double pole, double throw contactor basically wired between this 60 amp breaker and the other breaker box. Now that double pole, double throw contactor will give you the option to select either the short power cord or the power inverter. Now, this, this breaker here, the 60 amp breaker, is effectively the same as a main breaker in your house, like the main breaker in, the, in your breaker box. The only difference is, is they're in two separate boxes. The reason for that is, is when you, if you are running off inverter, and you have something like, you pull up at someone's house or whatever, and the only, only option you have for power is a 15 amp, uh, just a regular plug-in, you can run off your inverter, plug this big 50 amp cord with a couple of dog bones into their house, and that will power this breaker box, but not power the coach with that contactor switched to inverter. Now, I've got two smaller breakers here. These two smaller breakers will go through a set of switches, the control switches, to a set of, of converters to 120 to, to 24 volt DC converters. And what you'll be able to do is run your coach off your inverter, off your 24 volt battery bank. So if you want to do something like run an air conditioner, run a hot water heater, and run your griddle, and you need, you know, 35 or 40 amps, you'll be able to do all that for a you know, short amount of time, you know, an hour or whatever you need to do to, uh, you know, to get what you need done. And you'll run off your battery bank, but that small, little 15 amp charge circuit going through that converter when you're using less than 15 amps will put a net positive charge into your batteries. So I think that if you're somewhere that you didn't need a lot of air conditioning, uh, you could actually run this off of 15 amp service just to keep your batteries charged up enough to, uh, you know, cycle your air conditioner a little bit when in the middle of the day and, uh, you know, keep your hot water heater hot, whatever you need to do. Anyway, that's the reason they, they, I've got two different breaker boxes, basically the main breaker in one box and the, and the, and the main box, if you would, in, the, in a different location. is because a double fold, double throw contactor splits them up and you can power your, uh, your chargers off this breaker box without having it automatically connected to your other breaker box. Also, if you get 30 amp service, I want to have two chargers so you'll be able to charge your uh, your your batteries at 100 amps, 28 volts, 2800 watts, basically. So I said this in the last video, and I'm going to say it again. In a motor coach like this, you've got to keep your neutrals and your grounds separate. This is especially true in a motor coach where you go to something like a RV park that's notorious for having underrated electrical systems, and so. In an RV park, they may have something like a 90 degree rated wire where they'll have like a, you know, make up some numbers, like a number four, they're pulling a couple hundred amps through. And the voltage drop will be very high, especially if they're all sort of on the same side of either a three phase or a, a single phase system. And you may have, you know, eight or 10 or 12 or 15 volts voltage drop in your neutral. 
And if you do, and you have this tied, the neutral tied to your, to your chassis, that will induce a voltage in the chassis that's equal to the voltage drop. So you'll have, you know, eight or 10 or 12 volts. Now this isn't probably enough to ever kill you. Door just slammed shut. But it's absolutely enough if you're sweaty and you run and grab all the case and it'll shock you. Okay, here's basically the, the conglomeration of my electrical conductors that's running through this thing. There's a few down on the ground and there's some up here. This is mostly the hardwired stuff. Uh, this is all the high voltage. So this is all the high voltage, the Romex, and these orange extension cords are all the low voltage. These are actually mostly all the lights, like going back there where the tail lights have been hooked up. You see there's an orange cord hanging down. It'll run a set of tail lights and the uh, low voltage air conditioner systems. Okay, so in this junction box here, this is the SOLW cord is powering this breaker box. And it'll be hooked up to this double pole double pole contactor. This is what I was explaining. You switch will switch between uh, shore power and generator and or the uh, inverter. Now these orange cords, these are mostly all of the lighting that will be in this. There's actually extra wires. Is it just simply a, an extension cord? Typically, I only use one or two of the wires, and there are three. Several of these will be cut. This bundle of wires here is an SOW cord. This will be the low voltage. Along with this cord here is the high voltage. It'll go to a switch panel right behind me. It's on this wall right behind me. It'll be all the switches and the, and the gauges and the control systems. It'll turn a water heater off and on, start to kill the generator, the generator, oil pressure, water temperature, etc., amps, current, whatever. That'll be what takes, you know, is the wires that run through the gauge control system. Uh, here's a set of conductors here. This will be based on the trigger lock plug. Uh, this cable is a number 10, 6. It will go to the cab for higher current stuff like it will actually carry the current for the 12 and 24 volt battery charger to keep the front batteries hot. Uh, this, this one goes to the generator. This will be the control circuit here for the generator. Um, and then there's another smaller cord here bundled together. Two, two tied together here. Then the smaller cord will go back to the back and it'll be the power for the uh, defroster, little heat strip deals for the crap tanks. And then it'll have another circuit for the water heater and additional circuit for the water pump. So I've got a, there's a bundle of air hoses here. I know this looks ridiculous too, but my life revolves around right overkill. So the generator will be start, will be, will be killed and the speed control will be done with uh, a small pneumatic cylinders and there'll be some pneumatic air solenoids mounted under the floor here. And of these, uh, four of them will be the high speed, low speed, and start kill for the generator. And then there are uh, two of these will go to the step. The step will be pneumatically controlled with, a, with an air cylinder. And then uh, I want to have a kind of sophisticated, I say sophisticated, maybe complicated is a better word, uh, control system for the airbags, for the air suspension as coach. And it basically has got an automated, it's basically got an, an automatic valve, leveling valve, it's called a leveling valve, it's pretty simple. It's mounted to the frame of the chassis and it's got a rod and a lever that works it. It's pretty simple, straightforward for the leveling of the air system. I'm gonna pipe that output of that valve through a T through a set of, of electric solenoid valves so that when you turn the key off the truck, when you kill the truck, it shuts those valves so that the air system can't air up or down. It can't change once you kill the truck because typically the trucks leak air down and then the, and then the airbags go down. And in addition to that, it's going to have uh, it's going to have a switch in the cab where you basically do the same thing where it's instead of, you know, with the key on, you can still have the, the power go off to them. Boy, it's hot in here. And uh, so that you can eliminate that valve's ability to change the ride height. 
you know, basically have a switch. You know, you can kill the power when you turn the key off, it kills the power. In addition to that, I'm going to have another set of air solenoids with a gauge both in the cab and over here on my little control deal, my, my control panel things over here. You can see this two cables come up here to it. So that I can independently and manually control the air pressure in these two bags. And I wanted to do this. Uh, the steer axle weight on this truck is probably going to be around 18,000, 18,500, and it's going to be close to 19,500 if there's no water, no fuel in it, because the water and the fuel in the back helps offset the front axle uh, steer weight. And what I wanted to be able to do is if uh, I get in a situation to where if everything is empty and it's overweight, I can actually flip that switch, manually control the air systems, and put more weight on the front drive axle as compared to the rear drive axle to pull steer weight off this. I'll probably do this anyway going down the road in reason to get more weight off my steer axle just because I'm less worried about running 80 miles an hour. Uh, if I only had, you know, say 16,000 pounds on the steer axle instead of 19,000, just because the tires get hot, especially if it's hot outside. The, the other side of that is, is if I want to pull my back hole trailer with my back on it and have 10,000 pounds of tongue weight on the back of this thing. You know, what are the coaches that you have 10,000 pound tongue weight on? I'll need to do the opposite because it'll about have the front tires off the ground. I'll need to put more weight on the back drive axle as compared to the front axle. This will also give me the ability, once we're parked, to either raise or lower the rear end uh, by two and a half inches or something like that, either direction, up or down, if, uh, if we can use that to help us level it up a little bit. Uh, the, on the only last thing to mention is I've got uh, the cable run for, um, they, they've lost the cable that's going to go from here to my my battery bank. The, you, the post office, the last thing to mention is the post office has lost my, my cable, it's two gauge. Uh, this is going to go to my battery banks. Now, hang on. So I bought this, this is a shunt and a gauge, and this gauge is a smart self, uh, what's, what's the word to use, self calibrating a battery meter and it, it it senses voltage and current and you put in a baseline and power rating of your of your, uh, your battery bank and it'll give you a battery percentage and charge percentage of what your battery bank is now it'll go right down here on the floor welding leads now, I don't know if these are is look at being in the pictures they are the, the conductor is bigger than my thumb or huge you know 100 it was a 40 foot of it weighed like probably 60 or 70 pounds. Anyway, they run from there up underneath the floor back over here to the generator, back up to here, and this will be what carries the 270 amps from my 50 dN alternator. If you'll remember on the generator video, we stalled, installed, you see on the top there, it'll carry the 270 amps from that alternator back through this shunt to my batteries, to charge my batteries. All right, so I hope you enjoyed watching this. I know the whole electrical thing is, is extremely boring. I forgot one thing, let me back up. So my, my generator control systems, I'm gonna get a, a little PLC, programmable logic controller. And I'm gonna control my generator with a PLC. And I'll do a video about programming those, I love them. You can buy them cheap, the little Amazon or, or you know, I, the ones I used to always get were made by uh, Eaton. But they're super low powerful, you know, they're extremely low powered. You know, I mean, like some, about as smart as a calculator. But they're, you know, extremely useful in, in semi-automation. And uh, one of my big reasons I wanted to run it was that I didn't want to have, so my generator is going to have several different sort of settings, if you would. So it's going to, you know, obviously a start, and you know, you're going to crank it up. It's going to have an idle speed. Basically, it's going to sit there and idle and only run the alternator that's on the, 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 the Delco alternator to recharge the batteries. It'll have a high speed setting for actually running the generator head. You know, if you want the, uh, the whole 38,000 watt generator head or whatever it is now because it's, it's single phase. 
and, and it's also going to have a sort of recharge mode. You know, it's got a deal like you start up setting the mode and it runs until a point to where the batteries are at, you know, 90% charged or whatever and it automatically kills itself. And I thought this would be handy, you know, we go camping in Colorado a lot. You get up in the morning, you can't run a generator at night and you cook and you know, you run a heater all night and your batteries are kind of low. Well, you can crank it up and let it run while you leave, while you're out on your motorcycle, and when you get back, you don't have to listen to the generator run all day. And if you're gone all day, it doesn't have to sit there and run if it doesn't need to. Anyway, it's gonna have that, plus a little bit of uh, automation as far as if it gets low oil pressure, if the water temperature gets above a certain point, it's gonna shut itself down. I wanted to be able to control all of that, hopefully with a single rocker switch. And it's gonna be something like, you know, up a start, down a stop. You know, you push it up, you crank it up. But when it's running, you click it again, up, and instead of energizing the starter, it takes the engine to uh, to generator speed, full to full rated speed. If you click it again, it goes back to idle. And then if something like, if you click it up and hold it for, you know, 10 seconds or something, it puts it in the recharge mode and maybe turns the light on you know, a little indicator light over here on the control panel. And by doing that, with just a three-wire system, that gives me the ability to sort of put those switches everywhere, like one on the control panel, uh, you know, one on the nightstand, you know. If you go to bed and you want to let the generator run for a few minutes before you actually go to sleep, you can kill it back there without getting up. And then obviously as well, it'll give you the ability to put one in the cab of the truck. You can start to kill the generator or do whatever you need to do it. Anyway, I wanna, I wanna control that with a small PLC. Anyway, appreciate you watching. I know this is extremely boring crap. This is, you know, you know, dig your eyeballs out of your head kind of stuff to watch. But when I was designing all this, this is specifically ideas that I would like to have had. And that's, that's the reason that I'm kind of going through step by step some of this stuff that's ridiculously monotonous and boring. It's not because I think most people want to watch it, but because there's a few people that would really uh, benefit from the uh, from the brainstorm idea. Anyway, uh, next next week, next video, I'm going to try to get some rear ends underneath it. I've actually already moved the truck today and got one rear end out of it. Spoiler alert: uh, If you follow my Instagram thing, I'm not much of an Instagrammer. Uh, you can uh, you can already see that picture of our, I put it up yesterday last night but uh, anyway appreciate you watching if you like it give a thumbs up leave a comments if you got any good ideas you know I try to do these as real time as I can like today is the seventh and I'm probably going to try to get this video up like tomorrow you know so often you can comment on my video and it's not too late for me to sort of change something if you've got a brilliant idea but anyway appreciate it catch you next week